Welcome to our residence series. Dennis Urban is going to be speaking on a clear perspective on partial dentures. Dennis is a CDT and our director of clinical education, and we will begin the webinar shortly. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce the Northeast U.S. famous Adam Dreyfus, Corporate Account Manager for University, Government, and Institutions. Take it away, Adam. Oh, Jessica, thank you so much for the warm welcome and stop it about the famous part. I don't know how many different bulletin boards I'm on that people want to throw darts at, but that's okay. Um, no, seriously. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our ninth lecture out of a 10 lecture series um, I could not be prouder of what um, the attendance that we have received, the support we have received for this course. So first of all, thank you. I really do hope that you guys are learning because this is about your education and your progress uh, into your professional career. I cannot believe that we have hit the month of April. Um, I know that they say time flies when you're when you get a little bit older. I'm not that old and time is flying now. So I can't even imagine what Dennis is feeling. Only kidding, Dennis. Uh, no, seriously. Um, first of all, I just want to personally say thank you to everybody on this call. Um, we really, truly appreciate your support. We all know that you have choices that you can make, and we really do appreciate you choosing us as one of your partners. And please know that our support for you does not end when you finish your residency. Some of you will be doing a second, re a second year going into specialties. Um, I am proud to announce that um, NDX is expanding our presence in the university government and institutional segment that I will be um, training and coaching some, some team members of how to pursue this business nationwide. So please reach out at any time, wherever you may land and know that we are here to support you. Without further ado, I would like to turn it over to the professor, the encyclopedia, the man with a lot of knowledge, Dennis Ur. Thank you, Adam. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jessica. And uh, Adam, I think I did see our picture somewhere. I think it might have been in the post office. I'm not too sure. That's okay. Uh, okay. I'll exactly. it. <laughs> okay. Good. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to our presentation this morning, uh, A Clear Perspective on Partial Denture Technology. And you know, the removable partial denture market is as diversified as ever. And the partial denture demand is still on the rise, despite what many thought would be a declining market. So uh, you know, patients are looking for a partial denture that's cosmetic, aesthetic, and functional. And so today we're going to cover, you know, traditional to metal free on partial dentures. You know, so uh, it's it's a still in demand, this, uh, this technology. Uh, I just gave a seminar over the weekend in Charlotte. We had over 100 doctors. Uh, just coming together to learn more about partials and full dentures. And uh, so this, this, the, the, the demand out in the industry has been amazing for partial denture technology and full denture technology. So we're going to go through, uh, we have about 45 minutes, so we're going to go pretty quickly here, but we're going to cover a lot of different aspects of uh, partial denture technology. So uh, we're going to start off with uh, just some of the basics. Also, uh, there's a webinar outline line here, partial frame design, Kennedy classifications, traditional partials, metal, and then we'll get into some of the metal free technology. And, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because we, uh, out of the hundred doctors that we uh, had attended the, the seminar over the weekend, maybe one or two heard of a few of these metal free technology uh, uh, options here. You know, so we'll talk about clear met, duracetyl and acetyl resin material, visual clear, which is a, a nylon based material. And of course, all of you know Valplast and then the, uh, the CAD CAM side of things with Altair AKP. And some of the metal free techniques and then we'll talk about you know we'll interject digital technology in there also uh, as we, we go along so this is a, a excerpt from an article that was put out in uh, 2017 and it's still applicable today because it said the number of partially dentate adults is increasing and many patients will require replacement of missing teeth so that's obvious but rpds can have advantages and are widely used in clinical practices but however a significant need still exists to advance materials and fabrication technologies because of the unwanted health consequences associated with current RPDs. So when I first started reading this article, I said, what are they talking about unwanted health consequences? What's going on here? So the design, materials, ease of repair, and patient education and follow-up for RPD treatment, they all had a significant impact on the treatment success. And what was surprising was almost 40% of patients no longer use their RPDs within five years because of factors such as pain 
and aesthetics and research on RPD-based treatment for partial edentialism for both disease-oriented and patient-centered outcomes is lacking. So this has been a problem with uh, RPDs over the years. You know, it really takes a lot of knowledge and skill to design. That's why we're here. You know, when we're designing these cases, these partial denture cases, and we get a model in at the laboratory, we'll articulate it, we'll see what kind of room we have, what kind of uh, design and what kind of material we can use for these types of cases. So there's a lot of things to look into uh, before we even go ahead. You know, many times I'll get a design drawn on a model and the doctor would say, go ahead and, you know, cast a framework here. And sometimes we can't follow that design. So we're here to give you our, our knowledge and to, and to work together on, on planning these cases in a successful way. So we need thorough examination of the patient, examination of all the oral structures, and a complete diet radiographic survey just to see how healthy those uh, teeth are. Because I, I tell you, I, I've done partials in the past where radiographic surveys weren't done and the abutment teeth weren't healthy and it was detrimental to the patient and to the case. So we, needed those, we need those mounted diagnostic casts. We wanna evaluate that data and then survey that diagnostic data and that diagnostic cast. So, um, you know, when we design remove, remove partial dentures, we look at all the aspects, including undercuts, the, uh, the health of the teeth, and what kind of design we can utilize with metal frameworks or some metal free alternative frameworks. So, and we want to record those mouth preparations. And many times those mouth preparations aren't on the, uh, uh, the onset, those models that we get uh, uh, to uh, diagnostic models in the beginning. And we'll make those marks on the models and we'll work together with the doctor to advise the doctor on what to, what to do and find out what kind of receipts and preparation need to be done for a successful case. So one of the best books I love about, I like about the removable dentures is a clinician's guide is by Dr. Jones and Dr. Garcia. And I know they're using this to utilize this at NYU. And I know I spoke to a number of people around the country who like this book. And it's a, it's a simplified approach to removable park partial dentures. And it's a clinician's guide. So it's nice to have this in your operatory chair side, just, just as a review and maybe as a reference tool, you know, so this is a great book. So I like to bring this up. And some of the things we're going to be speaking about this morning are going to be out of this book here, Removable Partial Ventures. So what do we need for a successful case? Well, of course, the correct partial frame design. We have to survey it correctly. We need the supports, the rest seats. We need reciprocation on the, uh, the clasp teeth so the teeth don't move and we don't want these partials to act like an orthodontic appliance. And we need indirect retention. And we have our major and minor connectors and, our, of course, our saddle areas to hold the acrylic uh, and teeth onto. So when we're utilizing a model surveyor, you know, the occlusal plane should be parallel to the base of the surveyor, as you see here. And, uh, you know, analyze the model in the horizontal plane and in alternative planes also. Because we have to identify the undercuts that we need for retention and evaluate the path of insertion, you know. And, Many of these aspects are done now digitally when we, we're scanning these models and, and using software to, to design these models. So uh, I love the new digital technology and we'll elaborate on that in a few minutes. And you know, so the retentive tips of the class, they must engage um, uh, the undercuts that are, which are present and the undesirable undercuts and areas of the inter interference can be removed by the dentist by recontouring teeth also. Oh, let me just get this. There we go. Good. So then also when it comes to support, um, we want to provide the proper support because it, it prevents the denture from sinking in towards the underlying soft tissues. I can't tell you how many cases I've seen over the years of models have come into the laboratories. I know exactly what this patient must have been going through with this, this, uh, uh, this framework digging into the palatal area or the lingual area of the, of the mouth because it's almost like tattooed into the, into the soft tissue. So we want to really prevent that and we need those proper support levels. And this helps prevent the uh, underlying mucosa of uh, the, the, the patient's uh, tissue. And we, we need tooth-borne force, which is directed towards the lost long axis of the tooth. And tissue-borne load is distributed towards the soft tissue. And uh, most, the, but both, the majority of RPDs have both of them. It's, uh, and we need that uh, proper support there. So if you look at this picture here, you know, we have the metal framework, major connector, we have rest seats, minor connectors, and uh, everything we need for a good uh, stable partial. And then we look at the rest seats here. You know, of course, we have to look at the occlusal, cingulum, and sizal rest seats. And rests also provide indirect retention, positioning the denture correctly, and distributing the load. As you could see here on the right hand side, there's the different different aspects of um, you know design here. You know, we'll talk about clasp design in a minute. And like we're just touching on this today. All I'm talking about right now is can be can be a three to four hour presentation, uh, even longer. 
Uh, but I just wanted to, as a review, talking about the design of partial denture. So, and we talk about reciprocation, like I mentioned earlier, and we need that reciprocation because we don't have the reciprocating arm on a, on a parcel, what happens, teeth move. You know? So uh, you know, when disengaging from the undercut, the clasp will apply a lateral force on the tooth. And it's almost like an orthodontic appliance. So we need to have support on the opposite side of the tooth to recru reciprocate force. And this is also applicable to par acrylic partial dentures, transitional dentures. I can't tell you how many times I walk into, I'm training a laboratory technician or going into the lab, or going into the dental office, and I see a wrought wire clasp on a buckle and no reciprocation on a lingual. And what's going to happen with that? If that patient wears that a long time. Of course, it's like wearing a, a retainer, and it's going to—it's going to also—it's almost going to be like moving teeth when an orthodontic appliance. So, reciprocation is the balancing of the sideways force on a tooth. You know, and the reciprocating plate must be in contact with the tooth in order to function properly, as you can see here on this little outline uh, below. So we talk about major and minor connectors. I think everybody knows this as a review. Major connectors join the saddle areas and complete the attachment between the two halves of the arch. And minor connectors join the smaller components of the saddles. And we have a little picture of this in a little while. So we have lingual bars, lingual plates, palatal plates, palatal bars, and connectors also help support the bracing and indirect retention. So if you look over here, we have the circumferential, circumferential clasp uh, as, on, on, as an option for clasping. That's pretty much one of your uh, acres class one is one of the most popular clasps you, you have. Then we have back action clasps, uh, reverse back action, split clasps, ring clasps. Uh, and one of my favorites is an RPI clasp. So we have the, the rest, the proximal plate and an eye bar. And this is both retentive and aesthetic. Uh, so a lot of times with patients, I wanna see those clasps, the circumferential clasp, will recommend an RPI class if there's enough retention and if there's enough undercut on the tooth. And we have to be careful, you know, especially with uh, uh, what kind of restoration the patient has restorative restoration, such as porcelain and uh, or zirconia, we have to be careful of this type of clasping also. Again, to continue, we have the back action clasp. And we see these back action clasps, a lot of times what I would see in laboratories, they would be blocked by acrylic. And you want to really free up those areas on these back action, reverse back action clasps so no acrylic is in the way, because what the back session class is, is, the purpose of it is to, as it's going in a mouth, it sort of flexes a little bit and moves and goes back into the undercut. Uh, so there's a lot of different options for that, but they have to be done correctly. And you have on your lower right-hand side, you have your roach clasp here, and then you have ring clasp, and of course we mentioned the RPI clasp. So a lot of different clasping options out there, but we have to utilize the one that's most retentive, you know, and once, one that's going to be the most functional. And then indirect retention. When we talk about indirect retention, that prevents the tipping and rotation of an RPD. And indirect retention is most necessary in situations as a class one, class two, and class four cases where the main components of the denture are restricted to one part of the denture. In other words, we have one saddle area and a patient bites down on that one saddle area, things tend to tip or move around. So we need to have that uh, indirect retention. And this creates an axis and where the denture wants to tip over, you know, so we want to make sure it's really stable. And the components need to place on the op be placed place on the opposite side, the side, opposite side of this axis to stabilize it. And that can be provided by connectors, clasps, and rest seats, as you can see here on the lower, lower photo here. So in the saddle areas, you know, there's a lot of different designs for saddle areas. You know, you definitely want on free end distal extensions, want to have those tissue stops because that. That'll help stop that uh, uh, material and framework from digging into the soft tissue. There's mesh designs, there's solid metal designs with retention on top. Um, I like to, you know, I, solid metal re retention is okay, but it's kind of difficult to reline uh, if the patient has some recession. Uh, so there's different kind of mesh designs, even on a class four type of uh, uh, Kennedy classification where you have an anterior um, uh, denture and it's, uh, we have the anterior section. Many times that we, we utilize those designs and we have a metal backing so the patient doesn't break teeth or you know, has bad, if they have a bad bruxism history and they're breaking teeth, we need some of, something like a metal ling wall in those types of cases. So when we come to class, Kennedy classifications, we're describing a patient who has a bilateral free end distal extensions like you see here. And this is the most popular uh, classifications. And this is where you really would need those tissue stops on this type of classification. But we also wanna make sure you know, you know, many times we'll get impressions and we're missing the retromolar pads, missing, missing the, the hamula notches or the tuberosities on the upper. And, you know, we need that information. We still have, you know, it's still a combination of tissue support and clasp support. 
just like in, in uh, an overdenture case. You know, it's a combination of attachment support and tissue support, and the same thing with a partial denture. So I recall getting an impression in a few years ago when I had, uh, it was an upper impression and it was a metal tray and the uh, impression was taken. It looked like it was just, a, the doctor just put it around where the teeth, the material around where the teeth was. And we got this impression of missing the whole palate. So I called up the doctor. I said, doctor, I said, we're missing the whole palate on this case. What if, you know, we, we need to make a partial upper denture. She goes, yeah, but you're not going to, you know, not going to, patient's not going to have a palate. What do I need an impression for? So we went back and forth and back and forth. I finally got the, uh, the information across that we need that soft tissue area also, because we have to score that area. We have to design the area for the uh, major, uh, major connector. So we need all the information we can get on an impression, all the anatomical, anatomical landmarks and tissue areas also. So just keep that in mind because it's really important. Otherwise, we're going to lose time on the case and we're not going to go ahead with the cases like that. Some instances I've seen labs try to do that and, uh, and wind up being a remake. So just keep that in mind. And then we have Kennedy class two. This describes a patient who has a unilateral free end saddle and it has to be one sided or it's posterior or and it's posterior edentulous area, as you see here. And there are no further teeth behind the edentulous area. So this is Kennedy kind of class two. We have quite a bit of these also. And the class three is a unilateral bound posterior saddle when we have uh, you know, a natural tooth uh, on the anterior and, and the posterior. And in between, we all, almost have something like a, a unilateral partial type uh, uh, effect on here. You know, unilateral partials are okay, but I still like that cross palatal support or cross arch support when we're making these types of cases because they can, they can move, they can slip out of the mouth and you have to be careful. So, in Kennedy class four, I don't have a picture of it here, but uh, Kennedy class four is just picture like patient has four anterior teeth mitts missing on an upper and the rest is just um, uh, bound by a metal framework. Uh, and so this is the rarest of all classifications. Most of the time when I see these classifications, we're using some sort of metal backing on these, these types of cases for more support. So as we showed earlier, um, I wish I had my pointer to show all this out here, but you can see here, these are all the different connectors um, uh, as far as the, uh, the design of a mandibular framework here. You have your major connectors, number one, minor connectors, which are resin based and will be attached. That's those are the you know, 2B, 2A, as you see the mesh areas. And you have your, uh, if you look at 2B on the left-hand side here, that's a minor connector with a proximal plate. And then you have your occlusal rest. If you look at number three to the right-hand side, and then you have the rec retainer arm or number four on the right-hand side, and that's part of the whole clasp assembly. And then you have number five, which is the stabilizing or reciprocal components of the clasp assembly. And then of course, number six is an indirect retainer on the right-hand side between the, the, cusp, the bicuspid and cuspid there. And that's your indirect retainer and a minor connect connector and an occlusal rest. So this is a beautifully designed partial denture. It's gonna be stable. It's gonna work well for the patient. It's gonna be retentive. Uh, so we look to, to do this type of design when we're making our metal frameworks. So let's talk about traditional metal partials. They've been around a long time and, you know, but they're labor intensive. They take a lot of work, a lot of, you know, it, it's a lot of work in the laboratory. Uh, sometimes there's adjustments in, in the uh, operatory. Uh, patients complain of this, that they're heavy, they're not aesthetic, they don't want to see the metal, metal uh, clasps. And then sometimes they have that metal taste and a severe hot and cold sensation. So this is what how the industry started going into metal-free options. Uh, but the thing is, a lot of times we can't utilize those metal-free options. Um, the metal frameworks or uh, chrome cobalt frameworks are still viable in the dental industry today. And they will be, for I think, for a long time to come. So let's look at all the steps here of all the metal partial steps. So I counted 21 steps. So blocking out, duplicating, waxing, investing, putting your refractory in there, letting it set up, and uh, then uh, casting, cleaning it up, finishing, polishing, 21 steps. And guess how long that takes? It takes an average of seven hours to do a partial. So it's a lot of work. And it's a lot of work to finishing it and sometimes fitting it also. That's why we need the accuracy in the, uh, on impressions. So what's great, we've become, as far as technology goes, we have these partial design models now, modules now, from 3Shape, Exacad. So we can scan uh, a model or an impression. I like to scan the model after it's poured, and the software automatically blocks out the undercuts. You can take away that block out if you need to, if you want more retention. And look at the designs on the screen here. So what you see on a screen, it really is what you get when the case is either cast or centered or milled. And, uh, and I love this technology and uh, it's so predictable 
It saves so much time with duplicating and, and uh, refractory and casting. Well, we still cast with this method too. Well, we'll, we'll uh, you know, there's an option of printing or milling a wax pattern and then casting that wax pattern also. But you can see how nice this is designing this. When I started designing partial dentures, it used to take me probably about 45 minutes to design a partial uh, with Exacad and then Free Shape. And Free Shape I found a little bit easier. And now I can design a partial in 10 to 15 minutes. So it really works out well. So this is the milled or printed wax pattern that we utilize if we're gonna be casting. And then we have something called laser sintering. I love this technology. It's a great technology because all we have to do is scan the model and we send the, the STL file to the software and start designing our framework. And it's a laser sintered process as you see here. And look how that's done. Look on the left-hand side here. And uh, you can do up to 30 frames in an eight hour period. I know that doesn't mean to you to that much in the operatory, but to us, it means a lot, you know, and we always have that file. It's a little thinner than your traditional metal parcels. They're accurate, they're beautiful, and they have excellent fit on them. So this is one of my favorite ways to go when it comes to uh, uh, chrome cobalt uh, partials and metal partials. So let's talk, uh, touch on our metal free options now. We have a lot of different options out there. I, I put the options down, which I've been very successful with in the industry. And I had the opportunity to be the first to do clinical research with doctors around the country on a lot of these materials. So let's talk about metal free options. First one is nylon based materials. They've been around for a long time. And you consider, you know, Balplast was probably the first uh, nylon based partial out there. And yeah, they're flexible, they work well, they're light, they, you know, they can be aesthetic, but you have to have enough room. You have a patient with a tight bite and there's not enough room. Just keep in mind that we need enough room for the Valplast on nylon base and the denture teeth. And the reason why I'm saying we need enough room is because there's no um, natural retention between the teeth and the, and the uh, nylon base. So we have to do, we have to put mechanical retention, which means we have to drill holes in the teeth. So the nylon base material, when it's injected, can go into those holes and hold it onto the base. And if we have a bite that's too tight or not enough room. What's going to happen? We're going to try to put a hole in these teeth. And sooner or later, those teeth are going to break off out of the uh, nylon based partial of Malplast. So we make sure we look at all the variables when we're, we're planning these cases. So, so one of the complaints I hear about nylon based parcels is, you know, it's tissue bearing and it's subgingival clasping. And what I mean by that is also, there's always a lot of adjustment if it's not designed correctly. So we have the subgingival clasping, which goes down past, you know, past the abutment tooth and onto the gingiva. And a lot of times it irritates the patient. And then when you go to trim or, or adjust it, it kind of peels. So you really have to get a, a professional uh, adjustment kit that's out on the market. Many companies sell these uh, these kits that you can adjust the clasping uh, on the Valplast parcels and polish them with a rubber wheel. But um, you know, when I'm I'm Valplast certified and, on, and I know to tell our technicians that when you when you're making these and designing these parcels, just add a little minor relief for around those areas where the patient usually has a history of, um, of soreness and then it works out really well. So, uh, but teeth can be added to parcels, but it's a little labor intensive. If a patient needs and uh, loses a tooth and needs a tooth added, we need to take a pickup impression. And now we had CAD CAM capabilities to make these parcels also. So things can be scanned. We can be, they can be milled and printed now. And uh, although adjustments can be difficult at times, if you're not sure what, if, you, if you're not using the right tools. So this is the Valplast parcel nylon frame, nylon based framework. And what happened over the years too, a lot of uh, you know, employees from Valplast left the company. They started on their own. New, new materials came out on the market similar to Valplast and were competitive. Um, and uh, so there's a lot of different nylon based materials out there. <clears throat> One of them is Duraflex. And Duraflex is a company uh, called, called from Duracetal. And what I like about Duraflex, it's a flexible nylon based parcel, but it's easier to adjust and easier to polish. And it comes in a lot of nice different um, uh, gingival shades. We utilize this a lot in National Dentex. And uh, this is one of my favorite nylon based materials. And it won't absorb moisture, it's stain and odor resistant, and it's thin and a little bit more translucent. So it looks really natural in the mouth. But still, even when you're designing these cases, you wanna make sure we have enough room uh, all around to do uh, the teeth and the, uh, the denture base. And then there's TCS materials. This is another company out of California. Uh, there's a, there's um, and there's uh, another. Uh, they're based in New York here also. Different, different, a little different material, but it's it's still nylon based material. <clears throat> it's biocompatible, flexible, and aesthetic. So there's a lot of different choices out there when it comes to nylon based materials. 
So let's jump into a clear material now called ClearMed. And this is a material that's been out, for, I guess, for about seven or eight years now. I've been using it for about that long, longer of a period. <clears throat> and I was asked to do clinical trials with this also. And it's one of my favorite materials. The only drawback on this is not yet fully digital. You know, so what I'll do here is, you, know, you can see a finished and polished frame right here. Look how beautiful that is. And what happens, this kind of disappears in the mouth. And all you see is the natural uh, dentition or natural shade coming through that those clasps. So you really never see that that framework. You know, it's lightweight, it's rigid. The clasp are slightly flexible, and this is done with an injection technique. So it's a little bit labor intensive. It's done with uh, injection technique, as opposed to a metal partial that takes about seven hours. It takes about three to four hours to make. And this is one of the partials I've done, and it's a, there's a finish and partial dentry as you see here. Everything processed onto that uh, that clear framework, and you have rest seats, you have clasp. Everything looks beautiful. Really works out nicely. You could do Nesbitt type partials on this. I like these types of partials, especially when we're doing implant cases, single or multiple unit implant cases, and a patient needs a temporary. This is a great way to go. So we relieve those areas where the, uh, the healing caps are, have that patient wear these little single units of uh, Nesbits or unilateral partials, and it works out really nicely. It's aesthetic and they last quite a long time. And the class can be adjusted easily. And I'm gonna talk about that in a second. If we want, we can design and print the pattern also. We can print that pattern just like we did with the metal framework. We can print that pattern and then invest it, do some wax elimination and do injection techniques and with the thermoplastic material. So this is the, uh, this is actually the uh, clear, uh, the uh, invested denture here after the uh, wax is, is, uh, is cast, like you saw before. Then the wax is eliminated and injected. And this is what you see after it's injected. So there's a lot of work to be done. We have to take those supports off, finish it, ask, uh, open up the mesh a little bit, uh, the contour of those clasp and polish it. But the frame is invisible on the mouth. It's great and clasp a tooth bear bearing and they call it 90% into the undercut of the tooth and it creates excellent retention. So some of the uh, applications are, you can actually put uh, these clear clasp on existing metal partials. So you have uh, the support of metal and then you also have a clear clasp. Transitional cases with acrylic, I'll show you how that looks in a second. Uh, acrylic acrylic um, and a combination with these, this type of uh, material for new partial patients and also a nylon partial alternative. And also we utilize this for pediatric patients. This is some of my work for pediatric patients and pediatric patients love this, especially young adults who are in school and I don't want anybody to know they're wearing a type of partial uh, in, in their mouth. And this is great because it's cleansable, it's easy to take out and it's aesthetic. And the same material, they have class technology also with the same material where as you know, in, as you know, we used to utilize uh, raw wire clasps and you really have to know what you're doing when you're bending a raw wire clasp. Like most of the people I see who uh, bend raw wire clasps are not too sure what to do. It takes a lot of uh, expertise and, and practice. So uh, I've kind of gotten away from raw wire clasp and use, I utilize these clear clasps now. And I'll show you some place, cases what we had, what, we, what I've done here with this clear clasp material. But it takes on a natural shade of the tooth. It takes minutes to fabricate. It's a great acrylic uh, transitional partial alternative. Um, and it's a snap fit and kind to natural dentition. You know, as with metal or well, wire clasps, but they weren't aesthetic. It was difficult to adapt. And, you know, chrome call ball clasps are very time consuming also. So, what I did here, this is a case I did. This was going to be an implant case. So, I made a temporary acrylic partial transitional here and I adapted the clasp to the bicuspid here. I just heated it up with an alcohol torch. And this also, we need some, some mechanical retention. So after I bent the loop there around, or adapted it to tooth, I had to bend, uh, make a loop that's going to go into the acrylic and that's gonna be your retention loop. Otherwise it's not gonna have natural retention. So here you're gonna do a little horseshoe partial here. I adapt the clasp. This is a, when I set my teeth uh, on this case, you see I have lingual reciprocation uh, around those clasps there, like we, we talked about earlier. And then I'm gonna process this in acrylic. And there's the waxed up case with the anterior view of the setup with clasp in place. This is after it came out before it's finished after processing and heat cure acrylic. And this is after the case is finished and polished. So look how nice of you. A beautiful alternative for metal parcels for a transitional. And many times I'll do these transitional parcels and patients don't wanna part with them. You know, So uh, sometimes they, they're a little too, Retentive, a little too nice looking, but uh, you know it's a great long-term transition. Like if you want to put it that way, and there's a finished case that I did, 
and with these clasps here. And these clasps can be adjusted easily with a three prong plier. If you just heat it lightly and squeeze those clasps, it stays in position. You can tighten those clasps if you need to. This is a case here, which we did some crown and bridge on. We've got big, big these crowns were, and eventually the patient was going to get some sort of implants on this case. We wanted to do a, a transitional partial. So I got a little daring here and I made some rest seats out of this material and I adapted the clasp on the bicuspid and the molar. Kind of nice that it was adapted here on either side. And there's, there's two kind of times of thicknesses that you utilize. Anterior teeth have a little thinner uh, capabilities and this is a little wide, uh, thicker here. So I got everything in place here, waxed it up and set up the denture, ready to process. I processed it the traditional way in a flask. You see the retention loops. I put some diatoric holes in the teeth for retention. And there's a the finished case. Look how beautiful that came out. So you got diamond D acrylic with nice Vita teeth and we have uh, clear clasping and look how nice that looks. I left the clasp a little thicker because they were on the posterior teeth, but they're retentive. Look at those rest seats and those crowns. Yeah, look how nice that is. Got the lingual reciprocation. This is gonna be a functional, stable, and aesthetic partial. And I dipped it in water for a little special effect there, you can see. It's a nice alternative. So let me see how much time I have here. Okay, okay, a little bit nice. So the next alternative is uh, something called Altair AKP. This is a high performance polymer. And uh, what we do with this type of material is we can scan the model and we design it and then we mill the framework. So the only thing with this, it comes only in a couple of different shades. And a lot of, sometimes we get complaints that the patient sees white on the palate or on a lingual of the lower. Uh, but it's kind of a, they call it a peak material and it's a high performance polymer. There's a lot of these high performance polymers out in the market now. And they're utilized for hybrid type cases, uh, reinforcements on dentures and things like that. So uh, you can also utilize the frameworks. So, you know, there weren't any significant improvements made in partials. Uh, since the 50s. And now we finally have all these alternatives uh, for 288 years in, in partial denture technology. And now we finally have these alternatives here. So we've come a long way with partial denture technology. But here, as you can see, this, this framework here, it's a rigid framework. Patients say it feels uh, natural. It feels almost like bone, you know, and it's, uh, it's real natural looking, no shiny metal. And when we fabric fabricate it, we just scan the model and we design it. We don't have to worry about waxing or casting. And this is what we see on the screen as we design it. And what we see on the screen is what we're gonna get when we, we mill the case. And here we are on the, uh, this is, I think this is Exacad designing the partial denture. And this is just uh, after it's milled, you can see we're just cutting it out of the puck here. It takes literally minutes to cut out, not even a minute to cut out of the puck. And 90, 95, 98% of the time, it goes right back on the model without a problem. And then after we finish this, you can either make bite blocks or we can go to a setup on here and have the patient, have the doctor try it in the patient's mouth. But we have to we take all these supports off and you can see how easy it snaps out. I'll relieve those support areas and then I'll put it back on the model. So real nice material, really works well. And again, the undercuts are blocked out automatically. You can take, as you, on the right-hand side, you could relieve that, you can take away a little bit for more retention. But this type of partial has different type of clasping on it. Instead of your traditional circumferential clasp, as you see on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, you see more of a shorter, thicker clasp that goes into the undercut of the tooth. You can use nail heads for single teeth for retention, as you can see here, rest seats. Rest seats are a little rounded. And there's your finished uh, partial right here. So this is the first clinical case I did with this case, this uh, uh, with this material. That was about five or six years ago also. And uh, patient had metal partials, as you can see here, upper and lower metal partials. Take, took them out all the time. There were sore spots. The patient really wasn't comfortable. So this is what the patient's mouth looked like here so with the metal partial. Kind of a difficult bite here. So I made the partial frameworks. Then I put some occlusal rims on here. As you can see on the partial frameworks, how nice, nicely they fit on a model. We took a bite registration. I put it on an Artex articulator. Did a nice denture setup, as you can see here. And uh, really, I had plenty of room to work with, which is great. You know, patient had a lot of room on posteriorly set up these denture teeth. And the only thing you see, like you see here, it's where the circle is, it's, it's a little wider than usual. The good thing is you can colorize these clasps if you need to, you know, so uh, I have done that. There's a method to do that. And there's a palatal area, as you can see, you know, if the patient opens up and you have that whiteness on, on the palate, because there's only a couple of different shades with this type of polymer. But most patients aren't complaining about it. You know, they really, they like the lightweight and they like, uh, they think it's more aesthetic than a metal partial. There's a waxed up partial. 
this is the finish and process parcel. And so as you can see, so that's another alternative to parcel dentures. And lastly, we'll talk about thermoplastics. And one of them I mentioned earlier before is VisiClear. It's a clear, clear partial, but not as clear as a clear member material. It's a little bit more flexible. It does have nylon in it. We, we get a lot of demand for this at the NDX. We do a lot of these types of partials. It can also be done on uh, digitally too. So we, we mill these uh, partials out of the VisiClear discs, as you can see here. You can do combinations also with this clear clasp and acrylic partials. Metal frameworks with the, uh, uh, the clear, the VisiClear clasp also. Nice combination here. We got the rigidity. We have metal clasp on the posterior, and then we have this clear type, flexible type clear clasp on the anterior teeth. That's a, this is a great design. A lot of patients like this design here. You got the best of both worlds. And then we have the acrylic parcel here with, uh, with uh, the physically clear clasping here. And if clasp ever breaks, we have a tool called the hot shot gun. We can inject this in a matter of minutes and add a new clasp. If the patient loses a tooth, we can add to it and inject a new, another clasp also. A lot of different alternatives. And this is some of the equipment we use. One of them is the flex press. And there's your other injection uh, equipment uh, options here. But this is how the material comes. It's an acetyl framework. It's used in the dental industry for, for many years now. And uh, you know, so we have to, it comes in all the beta shades, which is good. And so uh, this, this material here, this uh, acetyl resin material, I, I made thousands of frameworks over the years with this material. And I'll show you some of the things I've done. So this is a partial upper framework, uh, open palette, and then we have the mesh work and the clasping. This is a pretty rigid framework, a little flexibility on the clasps. So this is your uh, thermoplastic. This is not a nylon based material. This is strictly thermoplastic material that comes in different beta shades. Nice fit on the upper here. I'm gonna process denture teeth on here and the patient has a nice uh, acrylic, acrylic partial with a, an acetyl resin or duracetyl framework. You could do combinations of pink duracetyl with clear, uh, visiclear clasps. We can do uh, duracetyl uh, uh, pink with tooth, uh, tooth shaded clasps. A little more work, a little more money, but it, look how nice that framework is. I don't do lingual bars anymore because they break too easily. This can break when you squeeze it. So I, I now I'll do lingual flush ups uh, all across the anterior on a lingual of the anterior teeth. Combination clasps with the on metal frameworks, just like we did with the clear clasps. Unilaterals, a lot of different options here. Now this particular case here, and I'm actually gonna be needing a case like this because my bite has collapsed. I'm gonna have to open my bite up a little bit. This is, a, look at this patient here. Uh, she's kind of really overclosed here and really tight. You can see a fracture, a craze line on number nine, and uh, she's fractured a lot of her teeth. And so the men, we made an appliance at a acetyl resin or duracetyl, as you can see here. So it goes over her natural teeth, open up the bite a little bit, to, uh, get her used to that open bite. Uh, so they can do more restorative work on the on the posterior teeth. So this is before on the left hand side and after on the right hand side. So the patient was in more of a comfortable position and less uh, stress on the you know she was biting so hard. Uh, our lower anterior teeth are really pushing against the lingual and the upper teeth, and this opened her up. And then we're going to uh, do some uh, restorative work on the posterior teeth here, before and after. And there's the appliance. So this is a great appliance. And yeah, you know, it's the same material they use for snap on smile. You know, this is uh, the duracetyl and, and uh, acetyl resin is the same material that you used. In. And it can also be done digitally. So I used to have to wax these up, invest it, uh, remove the wax and inject it. Now we can design this on the uh, uh, on, on the Exacad or, or three shape and then mill it. So as you can see here, and there's your different uh, options here with a snap on smile. It's called Zerlux Acetyl LTD. Comes in all the Vita shades. And you know, just to touch on, you know, it's general prosthetic denture, dentistry again, to wind it up here. And, you know, they say future trials should evaluate new RPD materials and design technologies. And we're there now. And it include both long-term follow-up and health-related and patient-reported outcomes. The advances in materials and digital design and production along with patient education promise to further the application of RPDs and improve the quality of life for patients requiring RPDs. So I want to just show this lastly, but not least, it's going to take another minute here. This is a case that I did. I used to do a lot of these for University of North Carolina, UNC. It's called the Dorosthetic PDO Partial. And I got a letter from Dr. Lakshan Long. I was actually near their office this weekend. And he says, Mr. Urban, I attached to several photos of Vicky's new appliance made by you. Your expertise and talents changed the little girl's life. 
We can now prescribe this treatment for other PDO patients due to do your concept of Dorosthetic Smile. Thank you for all your help. So we changed a little girl's life. This is uh, Vicky uh, before, and uh, this is her bite occlusal occlusion here. So she had to go through school, challenging to challenge the uh, uh, occlusion like this. So I made her this appliance out of acetyl resin and um, took out the denture teeth. The denture teeth are also made of, out of acetyl resin. And this is an appliance that we uh, fit over a natural teeth. I put a soft liner inside this called Versacryl. This softened up with the warmth of the mouth and stayed in place, very, very uh, sanitary and effective. And uh, it really worked out really well. So this is the Versacryl internally. It's like a soft liner material, it works well. So eye hygiene was not an issue. She was able to take this out during the day, rinse it off. And uh, this is how she looked afterwards. So really good uh, uh, effects and uh, outcomes on this material also. And as before and after. And that's called the Dorosthetic pedo, pedo Parcel. And with that, I think we're gonna end our presentation today. So I know we had a lot of information in a short period of time here, but uh, thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions or need more information on any of these materials, there are email addresses uh, on the screen here, but uh, Adam and myself, thank you so much. Dennis, thank you so much for your um, sharing your knowledge and your information. I, I do joke yeah. about age and, and knowledge, but it is quite incredible what, what you share with us uh, on a monthly basis. So thank, thank you. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate um, it. Uh, you you said something today which was just so glaring in my mind. Twenty one steps, seven hours. Yes, or right. one partial. Mm -hmm. And I need everyone on on this uh, presentation to know <coughs> that that's working time. That doesn't mean that that each step is only twenty minutes long, and they can move to the next step. So when people start asking us about turnaround times and about why can't I get it faster? There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. So just know that us at NDX are dedicated to making sure that you get what you need in a timely manner. That's number one. Um, number two, number two is that um, we are very well aware when you are at your dental schools that this um, lecture that was just put on is really not a main focus anymore. Um, Dennis and I actually were just uh, in some private conversations with a major institution uh, about trying to progress this, this, um, this part of the industry in teaching in a clinical, in, in a non-clinical setting. So what I'm getting at is we are a resource. We want to be your resource. All of you receive emails from me and you get our educational website. If you scroll down to the bottom of that website, there's a, there's a form to fill out. We want to stay in contact with you. I know you're coming up to the end of your residency time. Um, please share your information with us. If you want to email me, if you want to email Dennis, we'll keep it that way as well. We want your personal information. We're not going to solicit you. We really just want to be there as a resource. And without, without, I know that you need to get onto the clinic floor. I know you want to see those patients before you leave your program. But before we leave, I just want to wish everyone a very happy Easter, a happy Passover, a wonderful spring season. Thank you, everybody, for all that you do. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Take care now. Bye-bye.